Uh, and uh, we we can still, however, go over the, the services that we offer, you know, as we typically do on the podcast. Uh, Jack today is going to finish us up with uh, with Firefly 3's application interface. Um, so he's going to cover everything that I neglected to cover on the last so, episode. Really, there, and thank you for the intro. Really, there are only a handful of things to report on with uh, the application interface discussing the others category per se. Uh, with it, you have uh, accounts, classifications, reports, exporting data, your options, um, and really that's it right there. So. Obviously, uh, just a real quick run through. I'm not going to go into deep detail on all the accounts and everything. I think we t discussed on that for the most part uh, two episodes ago. Um, basically, you have asset accounts, expense accounts, revenue accounts, liabilities. And really, these are just kind of easy. You know, you, I'm not going to go into detail again on these. Uh, they're there. This is how you basically create them. This is how you cre create all those different accounts. Um, and then you get into classifications, which I found very interesting, uh, which discusses categories and tags, right? And I think you and I have very good understanding of what this is uh, within Canboard. Now, when it comes to expenses, what do these look like, right? And that's what I always ask myself. What's a category versus what's a, what do I tag something? Um, so a category would be like shopping or lifestyle is what I think of. Um, Why? It's broad, right? I, I keep the categories I think of as broad, more broad, right? Uh, I would say, I would say more like lifestyle, basically, uh, would be the broader category, and then the tag might be shopping related or you know, cosmetic. We we can go down this uh, example, sure. uh, like do, a cosmetic tag. Do I but, do I necessarily need uh, any kind of transaction slash account slash wherever else these categories would be like a piggy bank, wherever else these categories would be applied. Do I need all of them to fit in one of the categories that I come up with? No. Okay. No, they, they're option, very much optional. Okay. They do not have to be, you do not have to categorize anything. You do not have to tag anything. It's there for your own sake to sort and look at for your own sake, what you want to do. Um, I asked myself the same thing. So I went through and I created a bunch of random transactions, a random bunch of random accounts, and you can categorize the transactions however you want. You don't have to add them. Now it is worth noting with categories, the category has to exist before you can categorize it, if that makes sense. So you have to have the category there, whereas tags are pretty arbitrary. Tags you can type in, you can tag a transaction and just type in whatever tag you want. And it will just kind of add it in, and it, it's just like, oh, I'm going to tag this as close. Why? Because I feel like it, because it makes sense. And then you're able to track it through that. Uh, so those that, that is the two, the one, I guess, major thing to note. Categories are mandatory beforehand. Tags just kind of when you're entering the transaction. I found especially a lot of those ones that get created on the fly. So, so tags in this instance, um, some pieces of software call them labels. Uh, when when you have that field that gets populated as you type it in, uh, those come in super handy. I found almost as a rule of thumb with with temporary ways to organize things. For example, uh, having everything tagged as Q1 2022, right? Um, because that is a temporary tag that you're going to use for a while and then you're just going to, it, it doesn't matter that it's on there anymore. If you, you know, if you were to delete all of them, it's probably not going to matter. Whereas if you right. wanted to create a category, each time a, a cycle came back around, you would end you up with just a ton of categories that wouldn't make any sense and they'd be all hanging around. And like when you're doing reporting, you'd have a bunch of zeros because they're all like, it's just not, yeah, right. yeah, it's just a bunch of random stuff. Like, right. like for instance, um, and I actually just re situated my own personal board. Um, and I did something that I think I had talked about previously uh, on the podcast uh, the way I set up my financial uh, just way of thinking about how I do expenses is that I set it up according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Uh, so I have like, 
physiological at the top uh, and then safety and es- belonging and esteem and self-actualization. So like the most important thing is going to be at the, at the top, like getting groceries or, you know, yeah. clothes. Uh, but sometimes clothes are in esteem because they're like nice clothes. They're not like necessary clothes. So trying to figure that out and, and then, you know, having clothes as a, a, a tag, right? So my category is necessarily being one of those uh, and, and then having a, a tag or, or different, different way of, of denoting the other thing besides the category, which should be kind of applicable across the board. Sure. Uh, I like that. How you do that. Uh, your Maslow's hierarchy of it needs. Works. And then you I'm can, telling and you, then it you works. Can, and then that's, that's a good way to categorize everything, right? You can decide how you want to categorize each purchase and mm-hmm. then you can tag it however you need to tag it. So you're right. You can go out and get food. Is it a nice meal or is it just something to sustain you? Chicken right? and broccoli. And that, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I, I like that. That's a good, uh, good example. A good way to think about that. Those kinds of, a good way to categorize those types of purchases. Uh, so again, not to harp on this, but these are all optional, right? Anytime you create a transaction, you do not have to tag a category. You do not have to tag a, you not you don't have to add a tag. So both optional. Uh, if you look at the documentation, I have a terrible tag in there. Um, (laughs) <laughs> the transaction I created was a work transaction, just a random, you know, random number. Where is it source to the car payment? Uh, the description's terrible, but the, I, I'm going to have to go through and update it. The tag is payment. <laughs> so terrible because it's already a transaction. Yeah, but don't, don't try this at home. Get that kids. updated. Yeah. <laughs> um, next with the application interface, the other, other types of things that are available is reports. Mm. And this one's huge. Mm. I really like this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, because who doesn't like graphs, charts, and visual aids? Hey, to look I, at yeah, how I know spending people their money. in my day job who their entire day is filled with graphs and charts. They love. And- do they love it? Yeah. This is this is uh helps visual visualizing it. Sure. Um, so with creating report types, there are five or six here that you can create. Uh, default financial report, transaction history overview. Uh, you can create a budget, you can create a category report, you can create that tag report, and then you can create expense and revenue account reports. Uh, the really nice thing with this, so you can you can specify what accounts you want to include and what you want to exclude. So if you really want to just say, all right, what do I want to see? How much do I? How much did I spend? <laughs> you can specifically show mm-hmm. your, uh, spe- you know, your expense accounts essentially. Uh, along with that, you get the date range. For anyone importing data that's over 20 years old, I have some bad news for you. Uh, reports only go back 20 years, um, but they are, uh, they can be as short as a week, I believe. And then uh, the default, I think, is set to a month. So I, I've had to play around with it because uh, I, a year is usually what I find helpful just to categorize where are trends, what do they look like. Um, did I Did I tell you that my parents are moving out of their house? You'd mentioned it. Yeah. You had mentioned it. So they're doing that. And for just to preface this, I mean, my mom's not a hoarder by any, by any means. Um, but she does love, let's say has a tendency to uh, save a lot of documents just cause it's easy. I mean, you throw it in a box, sure. you throw it in the basement and you, you, sure. you keep it down there until you don't need it anymore. Well, she decided she didn't need a lot of those things anymore. And then going through that, uh, which, you know, kind of, I, I remembered because of your 20 year comment, uh, she had found bank statements and, and credit card statements going back to 1982. My, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, and, and crazy. It's, not like, it's okay. not like you know there was one or two of them in 1982. Like it was history like a started years, a year's at 1982, <laughs> a year's worth, yeah, and, a year's and worth and of transactions continued on to present day. Uh, <laughs> so that was that was kind of funny to to hear, and you know, and on reflection of that, yeah, it's probably not going to be helpful. You know, it, it's and, and and that's the frustrating part. It's like I have this information, I have this data. Isn't data supposed to be useful? And it's like no not Pass all data is a, the same yeah behind a certain point unfortunately no i mean 
I, I highly see it unlikely for you to get audited that long. What, what are we coming up? That's almost 40 years, yes. right? Yes. That is almost 40 years ago. Yeah. I, I highly doubt someone's going to come and say, hey, what were you doing in 1982, by the yeah. way? But she has them if she needs them. But, well, um, not anymore. Because they've been, <laughs> oh, no. They've got been, rid of them. <laughs> they've been shredded. Yeah. No, and, and, and I guess that's that's the... The end of that, it's like, look, what? Why are you doing this, right? And we go back to what we discussed earlier today. It's like, why am I creating a header, right? Why am I? Why am I saving this paper? There's always going to be a reason for things. And if you don't solve a problem, if you if you don't define that why, if you don't have that you know, motivation, that 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 drive to do something right it just becomes another meaningless you know and, and do i even have to do this kind of a task right and and then then you don't get excited about like digging into these kind of reports because these reports don't tell you anything right right the one i really liked i'll tell you was the audit report that they have available it's a super interesting one. It's supposed to give you an exact overview of your asset account, basically just tracking what hap what's happening to every asset, right? What what are, what are all the transactions? Where is my money actually going? So that's the one thing I really liked uh, when I saw this. But these reports are meant for you to look at, right? They're not meant... You can enter in all the transactions you want into Firefly 3. But I mean, in, in on the front page, it does give you like a, hey, this is where your net balances are. But I think you have to go back and look and say, where is everything? And what is it? Where has it been going? Because if you don't have a handle on that, you're, you have to know where you are to, for where you want to go. And I think that is really where reports come in. So uh, the four of these are very beneficial. They're highly customizable in the sense that you get to choose what accounts are going where. You know, you can track just your asset account just what's your bank account doing you can track just what where are my expenses what are the expenses looking like um or you can put them all together and just kind of track and manage what where everything's going uh and that you know obviously that overview of everything is going to be the most beneficial but if you need to drill down you have the ability to uh on top of reports uh there are there uh, this it feels very miscellaneous uh, this episode, there's just a, lo a lot of high level stuff to cover. Um, but there are a couple features I found in the options section that I found very interesting. Um, a lot of these are just your standard options uh, when you sign into an account. So basically, user ID, all that information, command, you can, you can operate this from the command line for a command line token, you can do OAuth. I found they have a two factor authentication if you want to get pretty deep into it it's very cool it's just out of the box right usually with these two-factor authentications unfortunately what i've seen with some of these applications is it ends up being you have to implement a third-party provider like authy or you know whoever uh set up some kind of text relay and at that point you say all right well the technical burden of this is just i don't want to do this with theirs it's very simple. It's out of the box. So you, I don't have a picture of it, but you can click on the two-step verification link in your profile. It shows a QR code and then it shows the, uh, if you want to do it manually, it shows the recovery codes, I believe. I don't know. I don't think they're recovery codes, but it shows basically the uh, eight characters. And I think there's 64 of them that you can add into, say, your Bitwarden instance. And then from there, it generates a code uh, in Bitwarden. You take that code and you you put it in your two-step verification, and then it asks you for a second code once it's generated. Uh, and so this one really stood out to me because I, I don't see that very often on these types of applications. Usually it's forcing you to roll your own. So uh, pretty cool to see that one. Um, and then the other one, obviously, if you just are absolutely done with Firefly, you have the option to delete all data. <laughs> you can delete it's a weird one uh, whatever you want kind of it's it's not just a delete all it's like a delete a specific set of things so i, I found that one very interesting as well uh just because usually you see the delete all as opposed to delete your accounts delete your asset accounts delete your expense accounts so a little bit different but uh it's a cool feature um and then the last thing i wanted to touch on uh really was the currencies uh and this one Obviously, I, I don't know if the developers are European. Uh, by default, it actually shows up in euros. So your uh, 
instance when it's deployed is set in euros. So unfortunately, you, I went to create a transaction the first time and I tried to switch the currency to US dollar because we're, you know, we're based out of the US. I just, I'm not transacting in euros. Sure enough, it's blocked, it's locked. So you can't go in and create an account, you can't create a transaction in US dollar. You have to actually go into the currencies page, set your, you, you have to enable it, uh, enable the US dollar and then set it as a default, um, which is pretty cool. And then the other thing I saw out there, uh, here's your crypto plug, Bitcoin Cash is out there. So Not- something interesting to see. Yeah, it's it. I didn't see Bitcoin, but Bitcoin Cash is <laughs> implemented as a, uh, a currency yeah, not, on Firefly 3. Not only is it implemented in Firefly 3, it's also the second option right below the Australian dollar and the Brazilian hey And <laughs> I, I was just, I, I, I did see that when I was deploying and I was like, that is so cool. That is so cool, right? So you can track you can track your Bitcoin Cash transactions. I'm gonna have to reach yeah. out to see why, because that's that's not like usual. That's not like typical. That's not like no. a, a crypto outsider. Oh, I just want to put in something default. Oh, let me just default to Bitcoin Cash. It's like no, you you thought that through for some reason. Let, let me default to Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> but. That's all I have for the other interfaces. Um, the big one we covered was classification. Obviously, categories and tags are important. Mm-hmm. Reports. You're, everyone loves a good chart, so I'd highly recommend uh, checking those out at least you know once a quarter. It's nice to look at that kind of stuff. Um, and then obviously you have all your options. If finances are pretty serious, uh, and I would just encourage this on all services, but two-step verification, it, it's easy to set up. There's no reason it shouldn't be set up for a service like this, um, especially if your password is, you know, say Hunter 2. It, it's something that can really protect you. It, it's that something you have, right? Um, something you know, something you have. So uh, that, that'll keep your account secure. But that is all I have for the other application interfaces i if you have any questions um reach out on rcompose.com reach out on rcompose.com um we're always available to answer any questions that you guys have and to wrap up this episode i'm going to play an interview that i had done uh, about a week ago uh, so i am going to let past andrew uh introduce you and uh take you through the rest of the episode <laughs> 